guys, uh, back again with another video, I know, shocker. Um, so what I thought I would do today is 10 tips on how to get an agent. I do get asked this all the time um, in my DMs or just in people that I know, friends and things like that. So I thought it'd be easier if I had a video um, that I could just link people to, to find out everything that you need to know. So yeah, let's get started. So tip number one, are you actually ready? Now, I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but um, for the most part, people clicking on this video usually tend to fall under certain categories. Either you're ready to take the next stage in your career and you want to step up and get an agent, you know, valid. Um, either you're a graduate um, and unfortunately with everything going on in the world, you've kind of just been left without your showcase and you're not really sure what to do next which once again is completely understandable or perhaps you're a graduate from a few years ago and you haven't managed to land an agent and you want to know some tips also completely valid or you're just new to this you don't really know how it works but you think you know you've got an interest and you want to pursue it and you're deciding to take this step all of these things are completely valid but what I'm going to ask you is are you actually ready? Because getting an agent is quite a difficult process within itself and a lot of people do give up. Um, but hopefully this video will make things easier. But the thing is about having an agent is that that is a lot of added pressure that you did not have before. Because every single time that you go into an audition and you don't land a role or you do a self tape and you don't land a role, that's pressure. It might not seem it, but you have to remember that your agent makes a living off of you landing jobs. And every single time that you don't land a job, that is added stress because then you're like, oh my God, why am I the only person on my client's books, books that's not landing jobs? And that's not to say that you're gonna land every single you know, job that you audition for. Of course you're not, you know, no, nobody does. But you have to, be strong enough that it's not an issue. Um, so, yeah, really genuinely think about that. It's not something that people talk about all the time, but it is something that you are going to have to really consider if you're all right with that. Now, for the actor that's new, you know, just coming in off the streets that probably has some sort of idea of how this industry works. You've probably been misinformed okay i'm just going to be honest um because that's kind of what this is all about you have to consider whether or not this is something that you truly want you have to have a look um and do all of the research and figure out if this really is a career path for you tip number two do you have enough work now, what I mean by this is if you look at the credits, everything that you've starred in, everything that you've done, unless you're a young actor, 18 or under, you need less work in general. Um, you may not even need any to land an agent if you are, you know, very young. But we're talking about the actor that's, you know, over 18. So you can kind of let me know which category you'd fall into, but if you are over 18, to apply for an agent, you're going to need a whole body of work to support you, to prove that you have been working on this. Now, the exception to this rule is if you've studied, you've trained, you've graduated, in which case that carries itself. And that should be your main selling point, that you are a trained actor. But we're talking about the working actor here. So if you are a trained actor, you don't really have to worry about that, but remember that that is your selling point. You really need to push that. Um, but we'll get into how you're going to push that in the later tips. But for the working actor, I know you're watching this because myself included, I did not study all the way. I did a few courses um, in acting, but I don't, I, like I'm not a trained actor and I've still, manage to get where I've gotten to. Therefore, if I can do it, you can do it. So you've got to make sure before you apply to an agent that you have got a full CV. And what you've got to also do is decide what kind of an actor you want to be. Do you want to do 
musical theatre, theatre, acting, TV, do you want to do all of those or do you only want to do some? And if you only want to do some then you have to make sure that that comes across in your CV. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you want to do TV then, you know, get, like, find some students that are doing television. There are a lot of online pages on things like Facebook and get in there, you know. Every single time that they put out a call, if it, you know, applies to you, um, if it's your casting type, then fire straight in. Get as much footage as you can. Get enough, you know, substance as you can to really fill up your CV. Because nobody is going to sign you, I'm just being honest, unless, like before, you're 18 or under, unless you have a full CV that is deliberate that you have worked on to polish, that there are enough solid credits there. You've got to work on that. If you don't have enough credits to back you up, you're not going to get signed. So if that's the case, if that is where you are now, then stop this video or feel free to keep watching this video. Go away. Get those credits. Then before you submit, come back here and I will see you then. Number three, are you skilled enough? Now, I'm not just talking about acting skill and acting ability. We're not going to get into that, okay? We're talking about general skills. To be a successful actor, to get signed, you are going to need a whole body of skills behind you. The more unique your skills are, the better, okay? I cannot stress how important this is. This is the difference between getting signed and not getting signed. I <clears throat> want you to write a list of all the skills that you have at your disposal. I'm talking uh, swimming, horse riding, tennis, badminton, all of those. Write all of them down. And once you've got them, then take a look and go, are these unique enough? Because, for example, swimming, most actors can swim. So, if there's a casting call put out for a swimmer, it's, you know, it's going to get flocked. Chances of you getting seen for a tape are slim to none. So, you're not of that much value to an agent. But if you can uh, sword fight, you've trained in unarmed stage combat, you've trained in um, armed stage combat, you can do broadsword, you can do stunts, you can do this and that. That's where things get interesting. That's what's going to spike the attention of an agent. Because what you've got to remember is every single day actors submit to agents. Actors that look just like you. Okay? And what is going to make you get signed and not them is what makes you unique. What makes you stand out. Because you could have an incredibly unique skill, like archery. Very few actors can actually do archery, right? So, let's say a casting call comes out looking for an actress or an actor that can do archery. There's going to be very, very few that go up for that call. So the chances of you getting it are much higher. So the more unique your skills, the better. But not only that, but do you speak other languages? Do you? Any at all, at any level or skill, doesn't matter. Even if you um, only did it in high school, but you remember it, or you know the way that bubbles work. You don't have to say that you're extremely skilled, but that you understand it, or that you could pass for it, or that you could pick it up quickly. That is also could be the difference between getting signed and not getting signed. Evaluate every single skill. The amount of agents that don't know that their actor can do a certain skill is mind-blowing, okay? The minute you can do something and do it well, put it on your CV. The more skills you have got, the better. I cannot stress that enough. Tip number four, headshots. Now, I could ramble on and on and on and on and on, trust me, about headshots, but let's not do that. Let's just, you know, cut it down. Do you have headshots? If not, why not go get them taken because 
Norwegian is going to take you without headshots. Okay, pause this video, go get your headshots done, come back. Now, if you have headshots, how old are they? Like seriously, how old are your headshots? I'm going to tell you a really quick story. My friend was casting something, she asked me to come along. Um, it was the first time she was ever casting something. So an actor comes in and we go, uh, you know, have you found the right place? Because there was nobody that we were expecting that looked anything like that. Turns out this guy's headshots were more than 10 years old. This guy turned up to this casting call that was casting like this 18 year old and he was in his 40s. Yes, that's a true story. Um, he had sent this headshot of himself when he appeared to be roughly 18 to 20 and he showed up and he was 40. Yeah. So if your headshots are more than two years old, I would say then you should really start asking yourself if you should have them redone. Now, it's not imperative that you've got, that you redo your headshots every year, every two years, it's not. But you want to make sure that your headshots reflect your current look. If you have cut your hair, dyed your hair, anything like that, get your headshots redone. Because now you have a new look and that new look is valuable to the casting director. Because let's say they're looking for somebody with black hair. In your headshots you've got black hair, now you've got blonde hair. If you've got blonde hair now, what if they're casting somebody with blonde hair? You understand? So make sure that you do update your headshots. Now, are your headshots too glamorous? Okay. Do not seriously question that. Don't go in for like this with this full glam look. You don't need it. It doesn't do anything for you. You don't need to go and get your hair done by a professional. You don't need to go to a makeup artist. Seriously, you just don't need it. You don't even need makeup at all. Just make yourself look the way you would look in everyday life. Because ultimately that is what is going to sell. So just stick to the natural look, the basics. Now, another thing to ask yourself is, let's say your headshots aren't up to par, right? You're not happy with them. They don't look like you. Get them redone. I know that it's, it can be so expensive, but it doesn't have to be. You can find um, photographers that are doing time for print, which means um, your time in exchange for the prints of photographs. That's what I've done with my most recent headshots. I literally had my headshots taken with a photographer that I'd worked with before and it cost me nothing. You can do the same. Or even feel free to reach out to young, you know, students who are doing photography. Have them take your headshots for free. A lot of them do for the experience, but you know, don't take advantage of anything. But do, you know, if they are offering it. They might not be good enough, but they might just be. You do not have to go out of your way and spend an absolute fortune on headshots. Tip number five, spotlight. Now, I know this is a big one, big dreaded word, um, but honestly, it's much harder to get an agent without spotlight. Because spotlight, basically to get on spotlight, Unless you're a young performer, in which case you are basically up until the ages of 25, you can be a spotlight young performer and you don't need, um, you know, the five professional credits. But if you are over 25 and you cannot get onto young performers, then you are going to need to get five professional credits. It may seem quite daunting to some, or perhaps to you it's not daunting at all, but you really do need Spotlight because Spotlight is the number one casting database, right? It's, it shows your professionalism. You can put all your credits on there, your headshots, your showreel. It is honestly going to sell you and it is going to save your backside when it comes to sending off to agents. Now, let's say you can't get on it. You don't have the credits. You've tried your best to get them and you simply can't, right? It's fine, don't panic. Because there are still lots and lots of agents that will consider you without spotlight. Now, it is actually going to be easier if you are young, up till about 25, then an agent is going to, you know, consider you um, above 
the older actor simply because you seem younger and they're kind of more drawn to that and accepting of the fact that you don't have those credits but that's not meaning to say that if you're over 25 years old an agent still won't consider you but you are going to seriously seriously make things easier if you have a spotlight because many agents really will not consider you unless you have it so do your best to get on it and if you can't what to do is just make sure that your CV is solid, really solid. You've got some great credits on there or you've got lots of credits on there. You have got a great showreel, um, which we will get into, but you've got a great showreel and you have got some great headshots because that enough, like that is enough. It will sell you. It's going to be more difficult, sure, but it will sell you. Tip number six. Showreels. Now, <laughs> basically you're going to need a showreel, okay? You can get signed without one, 100%. I have friends I've helped get agents and almost none of them had showreels. But what a showreel is going to do is give you the edge, if it's a good showreel. Now, maybe you're new to this and you simply don't know what makes a good showreel and a bad showreel, I'll break it down, but I might even go over this in a later video. But to keep it simple, number one, don't put any more than three clips in your showreel. Number two, don't add any music onto your showreel. It just irritates casting directors. Don't add music to scenes that wasn't there before. Don't do it. Number three, don't put a montage in the beginning, it's seriously annoys casting directors. I'm talking about like the action scenes, like the punching and like music going wild and you jumping around the place. No. It no, seriously, it really annoys them because casting directors have got very little time already to, you know, pick some actors to see. And they're gonna get annoyed if they have to spend that 30 seconds to a minute watching you run around and jump all over the place with this music going on. Or, you know, different faces. No. No. Don't put a montage in. Don't put music over your montage. No. Okay? Don't do it. <sighs> right. Another one for showreels. Put a slide of just your face, your spotlight pin, your agent... Bleh, ignore that. <laughs> Uh, this is, but when you sign with an agent, your agent's contact details will go in there. But because you're unsigned, your email address, professional one, don't make it like, oh, pink cupcakes, X or whatever. Sorry if that was your email. Uh, don't, you know. No, no, no. Have a professional email account. So have on there your spotlight pin, if you have spotlight. If you don't, it's fine. Just your headshot, your email, your full name. You don't need to put middle names, just like your first name, your last name. And your contact number is what should go in the beginning and on the end. And do you want to know why? Because when an agent or a casting director is looking at your showreel, by the end of it, they may have forgotten who the hell you are because they've looked at a million that day. So just to remind them, okay? Beginning and end, that's it. Stick to three clips. What I mean is only chop between them a maximum of three times. I, like, casting directors don't want to see, or agents don't want to see, 10 seconds of one thing, 10 seconds of another thing, 10 seconds of another, they're just going to get annoyed. They want to watch you in a scene. All they are looking for is um, the way that you talk, really. <laughs> like, that. that's genuinely almost it. They just want to see what you are actually like. So stick to no more than three scenes, okay? Another one. Hmm. This is kind of controversial, but out of all of the casting directors and agents that I have met, they don't like watching your most emotional or damaging scene because usually there's no context. So it doesn't show anything. You like, why? <laughs> like, just no. Just pick something like a scene where you're literally just talking to somebody. You can be talking about anything, but just that. That is all you need for your showreel. Let's say you don't have any showreel footage. Well then, get in some short films. 
get in some student films. Get footage any way you know how, okay? And please, 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 please avoid the footage of you in a play with like the worst, most shaky camera ever, terrible, really, really pitchy sound. Because that's another one that really annoys people. My sleeve just left, see? My sleeve is annoyed. That's another one that really, really annoys agents and casting directors because you can't tell anything from this dark theatre where we can barely see you. It's not going to do you any good, okay? So really, it's down to the short films and the student films. Get that footage. Tip number seven. If you're having loads and loads of trouble, um, let's say you've tried submitting to agents lots and lots of times and you've had no luck. Truth is, that's kind of just the way it is. But... Um, what you're going to have to consider is, are you aiming too high? Now, <clears throat> this is for the actor who is submitting to um, Curtis Brown, Hamilton Hodel, United Agents. You know, these like casting giants. You've got to stop and ask yourself, realistically, are they actually going to take me? Because the chances are, no, <laughs> they're not, okay? Unless you have just graduated from RCS, Rose Bruford, like, you know, a, a big institution. In which case, yeah, they, they'll probably be interested, you know, but th that's really the exception to the rule. Or, let's say you have landed a massive production or you got a part in a really really popular film or series or something in which case you're probably going to pique their interest but chances are they're just not gonna sign you you know the actor watching this video because you don't have enough professional credits okay let's say you you cannot even get on spotlight do you really think one of the best actors in the uk is going to sign you that's not to put a dampener that's just to say you're going to have to start being realistic don't waste your time applying to or trying to target these massive casting agents because testing uh, acting agencies <laughs> because you're just going to end up wasting your time, get your heart broken and chances are they're not even going to respond to saying no sorry, okay? Apply to a small agent, okay? For your first agent, apply to a small agent. I'm talking boutique agencies. They are much more likely to take you, develop your growth, help you, you know. That's really who you should be applying to, okay? Don't, seriously, avoid the casting giants altogether. Just avoid them. Because even if you get signed, you get put onto their books, you're on their books alongside some of the best actors in the UK. Who do you think they're going to focus their time and attention on? Exactly. So let's stick to smaller agents. Now, once you've done that, what you're going to have to do is take a look at who's on their books. Is there anyone on their books that looks like you? Yes? Well then, get moving. No, seriously. Don't try, because what can end up happening is you're competing for their spot. That's the truth. If, if an agent already has someone that is the spitting image of you, same skill set, it could even be same accent, they're not going to pick you. Do you understand? Because all they're going to say is, yeah, sorry, but there's already somebody that looks like you on your books. We already have someone that's got your look. We already have someone that this and that. You're wasting your time. Find the agency that doesn't have anyone that looks like you. Because that is your selling point. That is your marketing point. You don't even have to mention it. You don't have to mention that you know. But they are much more likely to sign you if you are what is missing. Do you understand? And another one to do is to get on social media and look up a lot of these smaller, more boutique agencies. Because the chances are, when they're, you know, looking for submissions or someone with a certain look, they're going to broadcast it because they want people to apply. Tip number eight. Be honest. Okay? Don't pretend you can do a certain skill or a certain accent if you can't. 
I know that you desperately want to get signed, um, you know, with an agent, and I can understand that. But don't lie to get yourself there because trust me, you will get caught out. And the minute you get caught out, they're not gonna know if you can do any of the skills on your CV. I'm, listen, <laughs> almost every single actor I know has done this. So you're not the only one, but it's imperative that you're honest. Tip number nine, okay. Let's say you've been through that list. You've gotten all the way here in this video. You've not had to go away and come back. You've got everything you need. You've got solid headshots. You're on Spotlight or you've got a great CV. You, yeah, you've got great credits. You have got a showreel. You've got the whole shebang, right? Now we're here. You're wondering what to do next. You have been through agents. You've found the ones you want to target. You've found the people on their books that you want to go for. Now, here's what you're gonna do. Don't put in your email, dear all, dear uh, agents at so-and-so. No, 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 no. Make it specific. Who in this agency, like, for example, some agencies are literally just so-and-so's associates and maybe they're only ran by one agent and some, some agencies are ran by a bunch of agents, right? If that's the case, be specific. Look at every single agent's books and once you've found the one that's missing, someone that looks like you and, you know, they are actually, like, your niche, that's what to do, is target them. Dear so-and-so, be specific at the agencies, whatever. Then talk about you. Seriously, talk about you. Milk it. Did you study? If so, where? When? Like, you know, give them that information. What are your skills? What makes you unique? Or are you bilingual? Or are you this and that? Put it in there. But stick to no more than a paragraph and a half. The minute an agent sees you've written them a book, they're not, gonna, they're not even going to read it. They're going to be like, sorry, I ain't got time for that. Make it blunt to the point. Why do you want them to sign you? Why them specifically? Why this agency? What can you offer them? Why are you good for them? Why should they sign you? And if you cannot figure out all those answers, then sis, go away and come back when you can. Be honest, okay? Be targeted. Why them specifically? And now you might not be successful with every single agency, but you're going to have a lot more luck if you are targeted straight to the point and you know exactly what you're doing and you can provide them with the service, you can provide them with those skills. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Tip number 10. We're here. This is the last one. We can get through this. So, this is quite a hard one. But... Can you do it financially? No. As I said, I'm going to be completely honest. This whole video has been honest. 98% of actors earn less than £20,000 a year. With most actors earning less than £10,000 a year. Are you fully prepared for that? If you're wanting fame and fortune, darling, this is the wrong career for you. Seriously. It, it really is. You have got to be okay with the fact that you're going to be broke for life, really. You know, you can work your socks off, you can do this and that, but you're going to have to be alright with not earning that much money. Now, it came as quite a shock to me. <laughs> when I started learning, when I started landing bigger jobs and bigger productions, I thought I was going to be milking it, making it rain, like, yes, money, <laughs> but it's just not the case. Like, seriously. Um, you are going to have to be okay with that. But I also want to ask you, do you have enough money right now to pay to travel all over, like all over the country, neighbouring countries to attend auditions? Do you have that money saved and set aside? Seriously, this is something that not that many people talk about, but you need a lot of money as security to get your headshots done, to get your showreel edited, to um, travel for meetings with your agent, to 
a travel to auditions, accommodation, this and that. These are all things you're going to have to take into consideration. As well as things like training, learning new skills, paying for spotlight. Because spotlight for adults is £150 a year. Equity, which is your insurance. I pay it, you know? Like, there are so many costs. You may, Maybe you want to pay for Mandy. Maybe you want to pay for a star now. Maybe you want to pay for Casting Call Pro. Do you have the money at your disposal to pay for all of these things? I know how much we can want things sometimes, but you have got to make sure that your savings are impeccable. Because when it comes to an audition, you have got to be there come rain or shine. No matter how much it costs for that last minute flight, train, bus, you need to have that money set aside. I cannot stress this enough. Not that many people talk about the financial side of things, but this is incredibly expensive. It's such an expensive career and you won't make that much more money out of it. So unless you want to act so bad that you cannot even fathom doing something else, like unless that is where you are, you really, really should consider doing something else because it is extortionate. So those are my 10 tips. Thank you um, so much for watching. If you have uh, any other questions, feel free to shoot me a DM on my social medias. Or if you want to be really nice, then um, comment down below and I will respond to your questions. Um, in which case then if anybody else has a similar question, they can see my response down in the comments. Um, but yeah, let me know how you found this video. If you would like a follow up, if you want more tips, um, tips about more tips about headshots or showreels and I know I made a lot of references in this to casting directors but you've got to remember that agents are going to send you off to casting directors so they're kind of a two-in-one deal but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys bye